What's up everybody? Welcome back to Bowling Science. I'm Mikey Pinnell, and today we're gonna go through the entire PAL layout system. Before we do, I wanna thank everybody who's helped us reach 8,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Um, that's absolutely crazy. I really appreciate the support, especially through the difficulties over the last year or so, but I am excited to have our lab staff family here with us, have all of our subscribership with us. And today, the fruits of our labor, we're going to show the PAL layout system. Now, a little bit about the system. It started as the no thumb layout system that my dad, Mo Pinnell, began working on Oh, over two years ago now. And so I remember back in 2018 when he first got wind that they might be taking away the thumb holes for no thumb bowlers, he immediately began working on a solution and using the pin above the line type of system was how he came up with. Over the past year and a half, two years, while I've been a two-handed player, him and I did work together and develop the layouts further, figure out what kind of parameters create the best ball motion, and how to define the geometry so that everyone can use it to create a simple system with eight steps that any pro shop operator can use to make sure that you get the best ball motion for you. I've got two new balls here with me today from Radical Bowling Technologies. They are two balls that my dad did develop. I've got the trailblazer and the payback. So we're going to show both the asymmetrical and the symmetrical methods because there is a little difference in the layouts we use for each and how we apply the layouts to the bowling ball. So I want to thank uh, Brunswick and Radical for uh, supplying us with these bowling balls so that we could show y'all how to use the system its best. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the merch store bowlingsciencelab.com. I'll have a link in the description. We've got some new t-shirts and stuff there to where you can show your bowling science pride out there on the lanes, support the channel, and uh, look good while doing it. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get to these layouts. First, we're going to start with the asymmetrical layouts. For the asymmetrical, we have a radical trailblazer. And for the trailblazer, we're going to show you today how to use the system to put the short pin layout on the ball for me. I'm gonna use my PAP and we're gonna see what that looks like. Let's head over to the drill press and get the lines on the ball. All right, so we are here with our Radical Trailblazer. I've got my Prosect and a grease pencil. That's all I need to put the PAL layout on this bowling ball. So you'll see this isn't at box surface. We took this down to about a thousand grit. I do like to use surface with short pin layouts, so if you are using a short pin layout, just bear in mind that they are designed to be used with strong asymmetrical cores to help bring the differential down and put them in a more usable range for rev dominant players. And they also have some length built into the actual layout itself. So I like to make sure we've got enough friction and we get the ball started when we need to. So if we hit the lanes with this and we don't like the surface, obviously we can adjust it, but about a thousand is where I'm gonna start for this short pin. The short pin layout is two and a quarter inches by six and a half inches by one inch up. So we're going to follow the steps of the PAL layout system. If you'd like to see the published charts of the layouts, I'm gonna have them up here on the screen a little bit. We also have published step-by-step -step guide out now. You can find those on my Facebook page. You can find them in the Bowling Science Forum, which is our group on Facebook. You'll also be able to find them in the community tab here on YouTube. If you go to the Bowling Science channel, click the community tab, you'll see that and some other posts. That's where I try to keep up with everybody. We are gonna start here with the pin to PAP arc, two and a quarter inches. Just mark a few spots here with your Prosect. And if you miss, it's okay. You can come back and draw more. Two and a quarter, so now our PSA to PAP distance is six and a half inches. So we're gonna put the zero mark right on the PSA. We're gonna make sure that stays there while we swing the Prosect over. We're gonna mark the six and a half inch part mark. And we have the intersection here. This intersection is now your PAP. We have it marked. So now we're gonna go ahead, hit the last part of the layout, which is the one inch pin above the line, P-A-L. The line refers to the line from the PAP that goes through the ring finger. Uh, controlling the pin height based on this line is how we control the shapes of the layouts within the system. 
So we're going to go an inch down and we're going to swing this arc around in a few places just to make sure that we have enough of an arc to draw a tangent line. What is a tangent line? A tangent line is a line that touches an arc or a circle at only one point. Tangent lines are really important for this. So we're going to now draw a line from our PAP tangent to that ring finger to PAP arc. Boom, you see the arc touches at just one point. All right, we now have that. Now we have to measure back for our PAP. Now my PAP is two and an eighth inches down and six inches over, normally written obviously six by two and an eighth down. But first we have to account for that vertical PAP coordinate. So because my PAP is down, we are going to go up with this next arc, two and one eighth inches. And this will get us back to the midline All right, we have our arc. And now we are going to, here comes the tricky part. I like to turn the ball upside down here. We have to draw a line. We need to draw the midline. The midline is going to be somewhere tangent to this arc, but we know that my horizontal PAP coordinate is six inches. According to the system, we're gonna subtract a half inch from that. It's five and a half inches. And that's where this line, the ring finger to PAP line, needs to intersect our eventual midline. So five and a half inches is what needs to be there and zero needs to be right at the tangent point to the arc. I think I've got it perfectly here first try. For my fans of braille skateboarding out there, first try. All right, there's our midline right there. So now we have to get the VAL. The VAL has to be by definition perpendicular or 90 degrees to that midline. So we are going to line up this back rib here. The left side of this back rib is how you create a right angle with a prosect. So as long as you line up the line perfectly with that left rib, you will get a 90 degree line. So here we go. It has to go through the PAP, obviously, because it's the VAL. All right, so we now have our VAL, we have our midline. All that's left to do now is measure back to find the center of my grip so that we can put holes in this bowling ball. All right, we know that my horizontal PAP coordinate is six inches, so we measure back six inches. That's the center of the grip, which is right in the center of the bridge. I'm gonna use that left side of that back rib to draw another perpendicular line. I like to extend it down a little bit. I'll mention why in just a minute. So from here, we draw our bridge so that we know where to put the edge of the finger holes. There's the bridge markers. Again, if you didn't know, the back of the prosect is the perfect width to install a bridge. So you put the rib centered on the line and you get the perfect width for a bridge. Now, according to the USB-C, all no thumb bowlers, we'll just draw a little picture here where our fingers go. So you can see what we're looking at. All no thumb bowlers have to mark the palm. Okay, and so marking the palm with an X, we will do that with our bevel knife or our engraver tool after we drill the ball. But a little trick I like to use because we have a perfect 90 degree line here as the center line of our grip, perfectly perpendicular to the midline. I like to go ahead and mark the X three inches down this line. just so that I have a consistent spot where the X is always marked. Well, that comes in handy is if you ever wanna remeasure your axis point with this ball, you have a mark from the X that you're going to put on the ball for USB-C purposes through the center of the grip. And that gives you a line. If you draw 90 degrees to that, you get a perfect midline. So your axis point measurements are never incorrect and you have no error here with the angle of your midline. So that's what this is gonna look like. This is the two and a quarter inch short pin layout from the PAL layout system on a Radical Trailblazer. Remember, we only use short pin layouts in this system on asymmetrical bowling balls. They are used mainly to decrease the total diff and 
as we don't have very many low diff asymmetrical bowling balls to choose from, this is how we create those. If you want to use a low flare layout on a sh symmetrical bowling ball, I recommend just using a lower diff symmetrical ball with similar cover stock. Speaking of symmetrical balls, we've got a radical payback. And so this is a medium diff symmetrical ball and this qualifies really well I think to be a good useful piece. It is uh, pretty much a true symmetrical I think 001 intermediate diff undrilled. So we're going to use the angular layout today uh, from the PAL layout system. Now if you've taken a look at the chart the system for doing symmetrical balls is a little bit different. The layouts are very similar, but we only have three layouts that we use. We use the strong, the angular, and the smooth layouts. Again, like we said when we had the other ball up here, if you want to short pin a payback, just drill a sneak attack. Um, that's kind of how we look at it. If there's a ball, a symmetrical ball that you want a lower diff version of, just go with a lower diff symmetrical ball with a similar cover stock from that same company. So. The first step to doing a symmetrical layout is different than the first step to the asymmetrical layout. Difference being a symmetrical layout only has two coordinates. It's going to be the pin to PAP distance and the pin above the ring finger line distance. There is no pin to PSA distance because this ball does not have a PSA, at least until you drill it. And when you drill it, the PSA is going to be based on wherever you put the holes not based on how you orient the ball. So our goal is to have this layout end up with the CG pointing towards the finger holes. That way we are taking out the most centric part of the equator of the ball. And we are also trying to keep our top weight within some sort of legal spec. I do try to use the lowest top weight options available when I'm laying out um, balls for myself because my access point is so far over and so far down that high top bowling balls can sometimes create an issue with certain layouts. Um, staying with, you know, try to find two and a half ounce top, um, less than that if you can. Um, it's pretty simple to find these days um, unless you're looking for something rare. So let's go ahead and start with the first step here. The first step to this one is going to be to orient the ball properly based on your PAP. So if your vertical coordinate is up, for your PAP, you're going to leave the ball just like this, the CG directly below the pin. If your PAP is down like mine, we're going to turn it so that the CG is 90 degrees to that center line. All right. And if your PAP is on the midline or like within a half inch of it, if you're close to the midline, you can go with something like 45 degrees. So my PAP is two and an eighth down. We're going to put the pin up here so that we can work with it. We're going to go ahead and stick the CG out to the left. Okay. And then we're going to start. What I like to do is first draw the pin to PAP arc for this layout. It's going to be a four and a half inch arc from pin to PAP. And I'm going to do it in a 45 degree direction downwards this way. And that's why the orientation of this matters. All right. Four and a half. All right. And that is going to be our PAP. We just mark the PAP right there and then we're going to go straight down two inches, sorry, three inches from the pin. That's because the angular layout for a symmetrical ball is four and a half by three PAL. So we're four and a half inches from the pin to the PAP and we're three inches above the line. So now we're going to draw that tangent line. There's that word again. We're going to make sure we're right on the PAP. We're going to touch that arc in just one place. There's only one line mathematically that can go through this point and the tangent point. So we now have our ring finger to PAP line. Now from here, the rest of it follows through very similarly. All right. We are going to go up from the PAP for my two and an eighth inch down axis coordinate. And again, if your PAP is up, you would measure down here. And if your PAP is on the midline, well, you're in luck because the ring finger to PAP line that you just drew is in fact your midline. So you can skip this whole arc step 
and just go to draw it, measuring back across your midline and drawing your VAL. I'm not that lucky. So we're gonna take the step to draw the vertical PAP arc. Now I'm going to take my prosect. My vertical coordinate of my PAP is six inches. So for this line where it intersects the ring finger, it's gonna be five and a half inches. Five and a half inches. And tangent right here, the zero needs to be right on that tangent point and then half an inch less than your horizontal coordinate needs to be intersecting the ring finger line down there. All right, we now have a midline. Same steps to finish, we're almost there. We're going to use the rib to draw a line perpendicular to the midline through the PAP. That's gonna give us our VAL. We're gonna measure back six inches along the midline to mark the center of the grip. We're gonna go 90 degrees, use the rib to find the center line of the grip here so that we can do two things like we did before. We're gonna mark the X for the palm and woohoo, we're gonna drop the prosect and we're gonna mark the bridge. All right, bridge marked. We're gonna go ahead and draw some finger holes here so you can see what we're looking at. And there you are. Now, if, the PA, if this is about an inch from the finger holes with the CG, it's gonna be perfectly fine. If you end up with your CG further from the holes than this, then you can just go ahead and start the layout process over just using a slightly different orientation. Whatever angle you orient the pin from is going to be the angle that it sits at. So we did it at 90 degrees. If I wanted to point this truly right through the ring finger, I could just kick it down to about 70 degrees. But this is a truly symmetrical ball. This is gonna be plenty legal with the low top weight that I've got in the ball. I believe this ball was 2.3 ounces of top to start. So we're gonna go ahead and mark our X three inches down the line. Again, just to make reading PAPs and redrawing the midline more accurate in the future. All right, and we're gonna engrave that spot. And we're gonna go ahead and drill these. My buddy LB, lab staff scientist LB, is gonna drill these up for me here at LDB Bowling Pro Shop in Parkersburg, West Virginia. So let's let him do what he does best and drill these holes. Another note about the layout system, we will drill these holes at least three and a half inches deep. I personally do mine at four inches because my pitches are such that those holes are never gonna hit. And the deeper the holes go, the more effect the layout will have on the ball. So this whole layout system is based on intersecting the core with the holes. If you don't go deep enough with the holes, it kinda kills the point. So we're gonna drill these four inches deep. We're gonna put the holes in this and the trailblazer. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go. Hustle out, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. To the system, I don't wanna be a slave. I've been doing shit my way, uh, or the highway. And in the driveway is a nice range. Cause I grind through the climb, I invite pain. You'll never hear me, bitch, nah, I don't complain. Just gotta flip the switch and you can go and obtain anything you want, anything you need. Your mind's got the key ingredient, it's belief. Uh, they'll see with the negativity. But I just slide right by that energy. Uh, even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. Thanks for hanging out with us today here at LDB Bowling Pro Shop. Shout outs to them. Shout outs to lab staff scientist, Larry Balzer. Also, if you want to join the lab, how did I not mention this earlier? If you want to join the lab, hit that join button down below. It's $5 a month, you join the lab staff, all sorts of cool perks. You get access to all of our videos early. You get merch discounts on our merch store. You also get access to our exclusive full suit jerseys by Awesome Custom Apparel. And you'll also get, what else? You get exclusive access to videos every month. 
videos that only lab staff members get to see. The video for May will be going up shortly. Thank you to everyone for the support. I appreciate you. Go out there, use some PAL layouts yourself. If you've used one of these layouts, let me know in the comment below. If you haven't used one of these layouts, let me know in the comment which one you're gonna use. I'm excited to see everyone's progress as we begin to adopt this system. Get it out there for everybody. If you got any questions, ask me a question in the comments. Hit me up on social media. I'm Mikey Pinnell. This has been Bowling Science. We'll catch you next time. I don't think I looked at the camera for any of this, by the way.